Greetings, pen pals. Well, another month has come and gone. That went really quickly. But then again, of course, February does come and go faster than any other month. I don't think you need me to explain that to you. In any case, we're going to be talking about all the pens I use each day for work during the month of February. These are no particular uh, rhyme or reason. These just happen to be the pens that I use each day in the month of February. We have a mixed bag here. Some of these pens I have done individual review videos on. Some I have not. I'll probably eventually get to all of them at one point or another. There is no time like the present, so let's just dive right into it. All right, the first pen up is a Diplomat Arrow. This is a really nice one. It's a two color one, uh, uh, a blue and uh, silver. Uh, the clip matches the silver, very, very nice. This uh, one happens to be uh, in uh, a, f a fine nib pen. Um, I like these Diplomat Arrows. They got a pretty nice amount of heft to them. They're actually quite heavy pens and I do like that. So this is, like we said, a Diplomat arrow and this has a uh, number six steel nib in fine and this ink is uh, Monteverde sapphire all right diplomat arrow all right, next up is a uh, probably no surprise to anybody, maybe my favorite pen in my collection. This is my Ranga Model 5. This is all in a red uh, uh, ebonite. Um, it is a either a cartridge converter or eyedropper filled. I use the cartridge, but the star of this pen is this fantastic 18 karat number eight Bach nib in broad. I just love, love, love. Uh, this pen and this uh, nib. So this is a Ranga Model 5. And this features a number 8 Bach nib in broad. And this ink is um, Birmingham. Fred Rogers cardigan red. Ranga Model 5 probably makes more appearances on this channel than any other pen. I think by a considerable margin. I've never actually tracked this sort of thing, but I'm quite confident in that. All right, next up is a pen from Pen BBS. This is the Model 487. This is the one with the funky magnetic filling mechanism. Um, did a, a series of videos on this, um, most notably a collaborative one with Doug Rathbun. This one's been reviewed to death and commented on all the idiosyncrasies of the filling mechanism. So this is a, like we said, a Pen BBS. Uh, 487 and this has a number six steel nib and this one is in medium and this ink is a Roshizuku Kanpeki. This might be the only non-pilot pen that I have inked up with an Zuko ink at the moment, now that I think about it. But it just goes so well with this uh, pen. All righty. Next up is a really, really favorite pen of mine. This is a Waterman Karen. Great pen. I like the, particularly like the sort of the styling on this one. It's got sort of this sort of clipped off looking end with this nice little piece of trim. It's got this really cool, very springy, really functional clip. Really like this pen. It's got a pull-off cap. Got a really, really cool inset nib um, uh, in 18 karat. Really nice. But this one is a factory stub. This is a, a stub nib made by Waterman. So this is really pretty cool. So this is a Waterman. Karen. And this has a uh, 18 karat stub nib. And 
and this ink is Waterman Tender Purple. This um, is available on a ton of different finishes. This is the black and rhodium version, but um, I think they call this the Black Sea version or something like that. But there's um, uh, a whole bunch of different finishes available on this uh, on this pen. Great, great uh, pen. Next up is a pen from Visconti, who normally makes very expensive pens, but uh, this is sort of their one of their entry level pens. It's only about a hundred dollars. This is a Visconti Breeze, but it's got all the cool. Uh, stuff you might expect. It's got this cool spring-loaded Ponte Vecchio bridge style clip. It does have a cool magnetic capping mechanism, which is pretty neat. Cartridge converter pen, steel nib, uh, number five size, etc. Pretty, pretty nice Visconti breeze. So this is a <clears throat> Visconti breeze. And uh, this has a number five steel nib in medium. And the ink here is J. Herban Vert Pre, which I believe means prairie green. It matches this pen quite, quite well. That is my Visconti Breathe. All right, next up is one of my favorite pilot pens, might be my favorite pilot pen. Uh, uh, and you know Pilot is definitely one of my favorite pen brands. This is the Pilot Bamboo. I just love, love this pen. It's got a fantastic, very unique shape and styling to it. It's got some real size and heft. Fantastic, fantastic, amazing looking and functional clip that's spring-loaded. Love this pen. They don't make this one anymore, unfortunately. This is from a few years ago, but this is a great pen. Um, so this is a Pilot bamboo and this is, has what pilot calls a number 10 nib Oop, sorry a number 10 nib they have their own sort of nib sizing system and the nib has sort of like this frosted effect which i really really like as well and that's in 14 carat and this is in medium and this ink is a roshizuku Takasumi. All right, that is the Pilot Bamboo. All right, next up is a cool pen from Rotring. It's a pocket pen that sort of solves the size problem by being a telescoping pen, which is pretty, pretty neat. Um, and this is the Rotring Esprit. So Rotring. Esprit. And um, one downside of this pen is it's cartridge, it's converter only. You can't, I'm sorry, cartridge only. You can't even fit a converter in here. So that is sort of the, um, the downside of this. And this has a steel nib in medium. And um, this ink is Colorverse. Blue black. All right, rope ring spray and see, see it telescopes when you pull it out and then all you do is push the cap in and it compresses back. So pretty cool from a size perspective. And of course, since it's made by rope ring, it has a red ring. All right, next up is a pretty new pen. I just did a review on this recently. This is a wooden pen from Jin Hao. This is the Jin Hao 9056. Um, looks a lot like a Conklin All-American, except it's about one-tenth the price. Ah, no, it's about, I said, um, that's not true. It's about a quarter of the price. Um, pretty, pretty nice pen. Wood, really nice section, and has these fantastic Jinhao number six nib, which I'm a big, big fan of. So, um, Jinhao. 9056. This has a number six steel nib. And this one's in fine. And this ink is Birmingham. Bourbon. There you go, Jinhao 9056. 
great, great pen. I really like it. And like I said, there's a full video I did on this just very, very recently. So check that out. Next one is a vintage Pilot pen. So this is pretty cool. This is a Pilot Super 150 V. This is from like the 50s and the 60s. Really neat pen. I really like the clip on this. It's got a spring-loaded clip. And I just like the shape. I think that's a really cool kind of shape on the clip. And um, it uses modern Pilot cartridges and converters, which is kind of nice. But unfortunately, you can't fit a Con 70 in there. So I use a Con 40 in here. And we all know how how bad that converter is, but that's about all you can fit in here. So there you go. Okay, so this is, as we said, a Pilot Super 150V, and this has a 14 karat nib in extra fine, and it's a quite a fine nib actually. Um, and this ink is a Roshizuku Tsutsuji. Pilot Super 150V, a vintage pen from Pilot. All right, next up is a really big pen from Ranga. This is a big acrylic pen from Ranga. Most of my pens from Ranga are ebonite. This one it happens to be acrylic and it has a Bach nib number six, which is pretty nice. So this is a Ranga Splendor. So we have a Ranga Splendor. And this has a number six Bach nib. In fine. And uh, this ink is Monteverde. Chocolate pudding. All right, Ranga Splendor. Pretty, pretty nice, big, big, big pen. All right, next up is a vintage pen from Pelican. This is a Pelican MK30. It's a piston filler pen, very much like the um, Mont Blanc 220 or the uh, Lamy 2000. Uh, the Lamy, two, they all came out around the same time in the mid 60s. The Lamy 2000 is the only one of those three that is still actually being made. So this is a Pelican MK30. And this has a 14 karat nib in fine. And this ink is Pelican Blue Black. Definitely one of those blue blacks that's more blue. We'll see a blue black in a little bit that's uh, definitely a lot more black. Another Diplomat Arrow, this one is the Diplomat Arrow Flame. This is very different than the Diplomat Arrow I showed you earlier. In terms of weight, this is a big hunk of steel. This is aluminum. The weight is huge, huge difference in the weight, even though it's the same size and style pen. This one has this flamed finish, which I just absolutely love. A great, great pen. Big, big fan of, uh, of this pen. All right, like I said, so this is the Diplomat Arrow Flame. And this has a number six steel nib in medium. Oop. Medium. And this ink is Monteverde Cherry Danish. All right, Diplomat Arrow Flame. Big, big, heavy hunk of steel pen. Um, all right. Next up is an Indian made ebonite pen, but not from Ranga. This is from Gamma. This is a Gamma Hawk, plain black ebonite. Very simple pen, very nice pen. Kind of big, but uh, a nice looking pen overall. This one is a eyedropper filled pen, has an ebonite feed, which is nice, and a number six steel nib. All right, this is a Gamma. 
talk. And this has a number six steel nib that is broad. And um, this ink is Noodler's Socrates. Gamma Hawk. Really nice, simple, glossy finish, black ebonite pen. Nothing fancy. Eye dropper feel very basic, but a nice, nice pen. Um, next up is a pen I just recently reviewed as well. This is from 2001, not a new pen. This is a sleeve filler, so this is a, has a sack in it. It's a modern pen that's made with a sack. Very unusual. It's a sleeve filling pen from Bexley with a really, really nice two-tone 18 karat nib that writes great. So this is a Bexley. Sleeve filler. And this has a uh, number 5 18 karat nib in broad. And this is, ink is Diamine 1864 blue black. And as you can see, this definitely leans more towards the black than the blue, but a very, very sharp looking pen. Bexley sleeve filler. All right. Next up is an American made pen from Texas. This is the Heinz Pen Company American Graffiti. Look at that acrylic. That is just so, so cool. Really, really like this one. Great pen from the Heinz Pen Company down in Texas. Here we go. This is the Heinz American Graffiti and this has a number six Bach nib that is steel and this is in broad and this ink is Robert Oster Aster Kiza wrote. There you go. Heinz American Graffiti. Really, really pretty. Pretty, pretty uh, pen. All right, last but not least is a pen that doesn't get a lot of attention. This is a um, uh, eyedropper filled pen from Pilot, the Pilot Tank. Not an easy to find pen. You don't see people talking about it very much, but I really, really like it. Pilot Tank Pen. So here we go. This is the Pilot Tank. And this has a steel nib. in medium, pretty fine for medium, but again, we're talking about a Japanese pen. And this ink is a Roshizuku Inaho. All right, well, that's another month in the can, so they, so as they say. Um, just a little friendly reminder, if you wouldn't mind to please like comment, share, and subscribe. That would all be quite welcome. And as always, until we see each other again, have a great, great day. Bye-bye.